How to market your business on a shoestring budget. That's the topic of today's presentation. And the information you're going to receive in the next 28 minutes is pertinent whether you're just starting business, whether you have a going business, or you have a mature business. It's going to be pertinent to you and information that you can use to market your business. And we're calling it marketing your business on a shoestring budget because we're going to ask you to invest your time and your creativity as opposed to your money in marketing your business. Hello, my name is Gary McKenzie. For over 40 years, I have worked with entrepreneurs and business leaders to develop their marketing presentations and improve their communication skills. Today's presentation, we'll be focusing in on marketing your business creatively. The Small Business Administration did a study four years ago, and they did a study as only a government agency could do. And their question was, why do businesses fail? Now, when I heard that, I thought, my goodness, I know why businesses fail. I'm sure you know why businesses fail. Yet their study, their study revealed something that I had not thought of, I'm sure you had not thought of. Why businesses fail. The number one reason is the business owner doesn't know what business they're in. How could that be? Not knowing what business you're in? And yet that was the number one reason. Now you may be thinking, why would the Small Business Administration be interested? Well, the Small Business Administration is a major lender to small businesses. And like any organization that loans money, they want to get paid back. So it's important that they understand why businesses fail. And we said businesses owners didn't know what business they were in. So here's the first step. When you're in business, you are a problem solver. You meet other people's needs, meaning you are a problem solver. So the first question is, what problems do you solve? Or what needs do you meet? Now immediately you may think, wow, that's easy, I know. I encourage you to spend some time, get in a quiet place, and make a list. A list of all the problems you solve. Is this major problems or small problems? What problems do you solve? And that will help you get focused on your marketing message. On what problems do you solve? So before you spend a lot of time and money, we want you to be really clear on problem solving. Now once you're clear on what problem you solve, the next is you have to have the ability to explain clearly and concisely to an audience, an audience of one or an audience of thousands, what problem you solve. Now the next question that you need to answer after you've clarify the problem you solve is who is your customer? Now many people say, well, the world is my customer. Everybody's my customer. Uh, I was guilty of thinking that in my consulting business. However, let me refocus this. Who is your customer who is willing to pay you to solve their problem? That is the key because if you're going to invest your time and energy, you want to get paid. That's how you are a successful business. Now part of this also is understanding where are these individuals? We'll say where do they gather? Because after all, if you're going to market, you want to market to a large group of individuals when you can. So what you want to find out is what organizations are they members of? What publications do they read? What uh, groups like in LinkedIn or Facebook are they in? That's where you want to be because you want to market to them where they are. Now many times when I'm talking with individuals and when I'm presenting this program live to a packed audience, there's always individuals that are thinking, well, I'm kind of like everyone else. No. The question we ask is, what makes you different? What makes you different from your competition? And that's the key. What makes you different? Now you may be thinking, well, 
There's hundreds and hundreds of businesses that provide similar information. Do just what I do. I don't know that I'm different. That's where I say you are incorrect. You are an expert in your field and you have a unique way of dealing with individuals. That's what makes you unique. There's a quote that I like to give and it says, all the knowledge I possess, anyone can get. That's true. However, they cannot relate to that knowledge and how to use it they, differently than the way you would present it. And the way you present it is what makes you unique because those individuals are going to relate to you. So now once we've got your marketing message together, we know who is your audience, we know who will pay you, and we know where they are gathered, the next step is to create your marketing message. And we're going to use this with the power of words. After all, we communicate in words, whether it's digitally as I'm doing today, I'm still using words, or if it's written, you're still using words. It's the power of words. Now, I want to encourage you, don't do what so many people do. They look at their competition and they say, oh, well, my competition is making this type of video, or they're writing this type of material, or they're marketing here, so I'll do that also. No, you're going to look like everyone else. You want to be different. So find out what makes you stand out. Maybe it's why you're in business, it's how you relate to your customers or your patients. In fact, something that uh, can be a little scary. It was scary for me. That is, you ask your customer, your best customer, why do you do business with me? And then listen for the answer and they will tell you what makes you unique. And then you want to incorporate their answer and their words into your marketing message because that's going to help you stand out. Words are powerful. That means you want to use powerful words. And for your marketing message, let me give you some words. Now, this is, an is not an exhaustive list. However, it's a list of words for you to consider using in your message because these are words that resonate with your audience. Now, the first word, we, and we love this word, opportunity. If you can get opportunity into your marketing message, people are going to like that. So opportunity is a powerful word to use. Community, another great word. You're marketing to a group of individuals that are similar. They are your community. So community is a nice word to get into your marketing message. Another word is convenience. Oh my goodness, we love convenience. Just as we're presenting this program today, we're making it convenient for you to pick up and use this information. It's convenient. And we're giving you an what? An opportunity to pick up information that you can use to market your business. Another word is individualized. Ah, individualized is a powerful word. You want to present information and you want to individualize it to your market, to your audience. People like that. Another powerful word, solutions. We've already said if you're in business, you are a solution provider. Solutions, another word to want, to want to include. Oh, and I love this one. This is one of my favorite words, common sense. When you work with me, I provide common sense solutions to your marketing and your communication. Well, these are words. These are a few of them. They're words I encourage you to try to use and put into your marketing message. Now, the next question you're asking is, you're thinking, well, Gary, do you have a template for that? I do. I have a template for that. Now, this template, I'm going to give you the basic information for you to use. And the first, and this is, comes easy, the first part of the template is your name. That's easy. That was the easy part. The next, we want to talk about what services do you provide. Now, for many individuals, they say, oh my goodness, my list of services is like that. Well, I want you to work on that and focus and get that list down to three primary services that you provide. Why? 
Have you had the experience of asking someone about their business? And they say, oh yeah, I do dot, 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 and your eyes glaze over? You don't want that. Get focused. No more than three, ideally one main service based upon your audience. Next, we want to use the benefit. Because after questions, people want to know, how does doing business with you benefit me? What they're asking is, how can your service change my life? How can it make things better for me? You want to be able to answer that question, a benefit statement. And next, who is this for? You want to state who is it for? What do they need? You want to address the need. And then finally, I like to use the word because. You could also say, so that they can. So write these out. And this is the template. Now you may not present this in the exact order. However, it's going to help you get your thoughts focused. So that you present your information, it comes across clearly, with great clarity and with emphasis. So this is a template to use. Now, as we're thinking about words in your presentation, let me shift gears just a bit. To answer this question and help you answer that question that people ask. When we used to be meeting socially, one-on-one, -on -one, the question someone said to you, oh, what do you do? You know you're going to be asked that question. So we want to be able to answer it clearly and succinctly. However, this question is pertinent in this market right now because you're going to be pre presenting and being on various programs that are digital, such as Zoom or Facebook. And the moderator is going to say to you, oh, tell us about your business. They're saying, what do you do? And you want a nice, concise, clear answer to that question, what do you do? And don't start off by saying, well, I'm the vice president of lending, or I own ABC Yoga Studio. Wrong way to answer that question. If you're a banker, you want to answer that question. I help individuals find that needed cash to expand their business. Or if you run a yoga studio, you might answer, I help individuals develop a core competency meditation so they can see their life more clearly and prepared to take action. Ask, answer that question with a benefit statement. Now, the next thing that you're thinking about, I know you're thinking about, is Gary, this is all great. We know the words to use, whether it's in written form. We know how to answer that question, what do you do, in a short, succinct statement, giving a benefit statement. Where in the world am I going to use this? Well, here's some ideas. Some marketing ideas. One, video. I know. I know. You're thinking, I don't like the way I look on video. I don't like the way I sound on video. Now, I'm not going to say get over it. I'm just going to remind you, we see you every day. That's what you look like. That's what you sound like. Come talk to us. So use video. How can you do that? Facebook, free platform. You can do Facebook Live. Or you can pre-record a video and post it to Facebook. Great way to market your business and improve your visibility. Another way, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, there again, if your customer, if your clients are on LinkedIn, create short, I would say five minute videos and post them to LinkedIn, and post them regularly, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn. And don't forget YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine or platform that people search on. Create YouTube videos. And again, probably a five minute video, and post it, and do it regularly. Don't just post one, have a schedule. Post to, vid post to YouTube, at least one a week, Post it. See what it's going to do for your business. Now, here's some other ideas. And these are ideas that take not money, but ingenuity, creativity. And number one is email and text marketing. Maybe you can present a weekly uh, log or 
saying business tips and send out tips to your audience to how they can use, use your information to improve their business. Or comment on posts. You're seeing individuals post on LinkedIn, post on Facebook, post on Twitter. Don't just do, oh, like. That's easy. Take a moment and write a comment. That person that posted that is going to be seeing the comment and all of their audience is going to see that comment. What's that do for you? That begins to show you as an expert, as someone that's knowledgeable, very valuable. Also, working with your customers, uh, write to them, post things on your LinkedIn site, post things on your Facebook site that are interesting to your customers. Now some other ideas. Those, that's, those ideas are using email and text, and, and you can also uh, private message individuals. Some other thoughts. You want to be of uh, convenience. If you have a business that can offer pickup and delivery, maybe your business is somewhat closed right now, offer your customers, send them an email. When you do something scary, make a phone call to them and offer, let them know that you are available to pick up and deliver and talk about what you're doing to make sure that everything is safe. I'll explain your safety precautions. Oh yeah, and one other thing, ask for referrals. Ask for referrals. Because if this person is stuck at home and they need help, they know other people. Ask for referrals. Some other ideas. Webinars and podcasts. I know. <clears throat> You're thinking, oh, podcast? No, no. Webinar? Oh, no. no. Wait a minute. They're easy. Podcasts are easy. For me, I want to say webinars. Webinars, you can, you can use a platform like Zoom. It's free for, I think, for 40 minutes. So as long as you've got your information tightly packed, you can present a Zoom webinar. And there's other platforms also. That's just the one I'm familiar with. But do that. Or, or be a guest. Individuals that create webinars or are hosting podcasts, they're looking for interesting individuals. Offer to be a guest on their podcast. Offer to be a guest on their video conference. There again, it gives you visibility. And the beauty is, all you have to do is get ready and show up. You don't have to do any marketing. You don't have to have any fancy equipment. And it works. It helps you maintain your visibility. It helps you be known as an expert. And why is an expert important? People want to do business with who? Experts. And they will pay what? A premium to do business with experts. So don't overlook that. Oh, and if you say, well, I don't want to do any of that, that's okay. Ask questions. Here again, if it's a podcast or a video, ask good questions. Don't say, oh, I think this is a silly question. No, no, no. Ask the question. Because the goal is you want, to, you want to have conversation. You want to interact. And you want to increase your visibility. And when you do that, that increases your visibility. And the final, the final part of being successful in marketing, and that is called follow up. Follow up with the individuals that you meet in person or you meet digitally. And don't just follow up once. Have a plan. Put it on your calendar. You're going to follow up with that individual routinely over a period of time because the goal is to be present. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Gary, when I go to meetings and I've met people face to face, and I've shaken their hand, and I've exchanged a business card, that's easy. At least I had a contact. You've been talking about being on podcasts and video programs and digital programs. I see the people, and they possibly can see me if it's uh, on video. I haven't met them. Okay, here's what you do, and this works. And here, here if, I'm going to use Zoom as an example. However, this works on any platform. Make a list of the people that are on the program because their name shows up. Write it down. After the program, what do you do? Here's what I do, and I suggest you consider it because it works. It's proven. Go to LinkedIn, type in their name, do a search. When they show up, 
send them an invitation. And here's how you write the invitation. Say, hello, my name is, and we were just saw you on this LinkedIn program with dot, dot, dot. Please accept my invitation to connect on LinkedIn. They will connect with you. You can follow this same thing, same process, if on Facebook. There again, you want to do a search and then send an invitation to uh, connect with them. Once you've connected, question, well, what do I do with it now? Don't try to sell them something. Instead, ask a question. A great question that I like to ask, and I get lots of responses, is I ask, what are you working on now? What's your most pressing project? People will answer. It gives you a chance to create a dialogue. And when you create a dialogue, you're building what? A relationship. You're creating trust. And there will come a point when you can make an offer to that individual. However, that offer comes down the road. because You have to have trust. We're creating no like, and trust with the, with the individuals. And that's the process. That's the follow-up process that I'm referring to. And when you follow this, you're building your community, you're building your influence, you're building your expertise, and you will build your business. Now, this has been quick. We've covered a lot of material here and a great broad brush. But if you have questions, I invite you to contact me. I'm always delighted to speak with entrepreneurs and business leaders about how they can improve their marketing and their communication skills so that they can build their business, increase their income, and increase their influence. On the slide, you'll see my contact information. Feel free to email me or go to my website. If you're at my website on the contact area, all you need to do is write in, in there, uh, shoestring marketing, and I'll get back with you. This is Gary McKenzie, and I thank you for investing your most valuable asset, your time, to be here with me.